What is going on, Misfit Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I am host Matt, the Misfit. This is your Stardom American Dream 2024 review for April the 5th, 2024. I was meant to do this review a little bit earlier, got sidetracked. It's okay. But I am going to talk about the show. So I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and just the downright negative, which is not a lot of, of it. Uh, no, I didn't record or do a dynamite review last night because I fucking hated the show. So there was no point of me recording, doing anything regarding AEW. Uh, because once they had Edge come out there and do a promo to fucking go back on the CM Punk stuff, I'm like, yep, this show is a fucking failure. So, fuck that. Also, what they did to Jay White on that show pisses me off, so fuck that. Best thing on that show was the ending segment. That was it. That's my review of that show. Fuck that show. I may not even talk about it on the Sunday show. I might not even do a Sunday show because of WrestleMania. There actually there will not be a pile driver pulse this week. What am I talking about? Because WrestleMania is this week. Anyway, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment down below. YouTube.com slash at Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Follow the social media. It's Pile Driver Pulse on Twitter. Misfit Wrestling Pod on Instagram. Audio outlet, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Pandora, and on audible.com. I would like to thank no sponsors of this show because I don't have any sponsors. I wish I did. Uh, but my good friend, Blitzball Champ, who's over there hang- chilling out in Philly, he went to the Stardom show this week or tonight. Uh, he's, not on the, he's not here with me this week, but I will try to get him here for All Star Grand Queendom. Uh, I would love to get his perspective on that show. Because he was there. Uh, he Unfortunately, one thing I didn't like about this show, the only negative about this entire show that I can, that I can give. Well, actually, I'll, I'll save that for a second. Let's, we got some bit of news to talk about regarding stardom because there were two things that happened. On the, uh, uh, one happened sort of on the show. And the other thing did happen on the show. We see Natalia, WWE's Natalia. She was in attendance for the Stardom show. She took a picture with a lot of the Stardom wrestlers. Um, she, of course, took a photo with the president of Star- uh, Stardom, Mr. Okada. Or the president of Bushy Road, really. He, she, he took a picture with her. That went up on both one of Stardom, one of the two Stardom uh, Twitter pages. I'm not entirely sure. She also took pictures with the following Joshi names. She took photos with Mina Sharikawa, uh one third of the artists of Stardom champions, the World of Stardom champion Micah, and the IWGP Women's Champion Mayu Iwatani. She also, I believe she also took a picture with Rossi Ogawa, which we'll talk about here. Rossi Ogawa, who is currently in Philadelphia. Yes, Rossi Ogawa in Philadelphia. He's not alone. He brought Julia with her. Julia is in the uh, is in Philadelphia for WrestleMania week because of Tokyo Sports put out a uh, report on Wednesday. Uh, that she was on, looks like, a flight to the United States to to be a part of WrestleMania 40 weekend. Uh, She had told Tokyo Sports that she's going to go to Himalayas and stay there in the mountains to shave one of her eyebrows, which turns out it's a fucking lie. (laughs) But we knew it was going to be a lie. I'm like, she's not going to no damn Himalayas because, for one, the Himalayas are not in America. That they're in China. Secondly, she put out a post a, a post on Twitter today, basically saying nothing, but uh, but she 
she uh, put a picture out of whatever it was, and, and you know, basically try her trying to uh, try to tell us she's in the fucking Himalaya. She's not. She's was seen walking around WWE World, hanging out with fans, taking photos with them. Same with Rossi Ogawa. Rossi Ogawa met with a lot of the star WWE former Stardom talent, uh, alumni. Uh, WWE Women's Champion Io Shirai, who will be uh, having her first singles match in WrestleMania uh, on a Sunday night. We do know the official uh, night one, the night two things. I did tell you about that on uh, Saturday or on Monday's po- uh, podcast. And then Rossi Ogawa. Also, I think she. I think he saw Kyrie. I'm not entirely sure. We do know that he saw. Selena Vega, because Selena Vega was doing a stream on Twitch about that. Uh, she also mentioned stuff about Hana Kimura and all that stuff. Uh, it's not on her back catalog so far, so I can't go back and watch it. But she, somebody will post a photo, photo, uh, video of it somewhere. Um. So, but yeah, uh, the rumor in the in in the 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 rumor in 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 Forte going around for this weekend. Is that Julia will be a part of something on Saturday afternoon for NXT Stand and Deliver? That is the rumor going around right now. Because, um, so so the rumor the the rumor and possibly speculation going around is that Rossi Ogawa's new promotion is going to be. Uh, affiliated with WWE in some way, shape, or form. Rossi Ogawa is in, like I said, Philadelphia. So is uh, Julia. Julia, like I said, rumored to appear some way, shape, or form at NXT, at NXT Stand and Deliver. But she is not the only one who apparently is in Philadelphia, not actually making any... Um, any, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like reference to it, but my Sakurai posted a photo on Wednesday of her going to an airport at around the same amount, around the amount of same time that Julia had put out. A photo of her going on to the airport. And then about an hour or so ago, she posted a photo of her. I'm assuming is Philadelphia. Maybe I don't know. Um, she's somewhere right now. I just don't know where it's at. Uh, but it, it, I did make the joke. That and I don't know if I don't know if I talked about it on on Monday's show, but Julia showed up for pro wrestling. No one I did, and I said I made a joke or something along the lines of, uh, you know, now watch my Sakurai show up in pro wrestling. No, in case you know, she told Julia she'd be going anywhere she would go. So there's that. Some other news here I want to talk about before I go into. Uh, but, so, like I said, those three, possibly, most likely just Julia and, 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 and uh, Rossi Ogawa rumored to make an appearance at NXT Stand and Deliver on Saturday. We will talk about that if that happens on during the WrestleMania 40 Night 1 review. Another thing that happened on the on today... Shayna Baszler did her Bloodsport X stuff with Bloodsport 10 thing with Masha, Masha Slamovich and a very excellent fucking match. Uh, and I said to people, I said, this is not going to be the same Shayna Baszler you've been seeing for months and months and months on the main roster. And I was proven correct again. Um, this is Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler got to be the Shayna Baszler of NXT in at, at Bloodsport, and I, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved what they did here. This is pretty good. 
Um, so so there's that. Yeah, but this is pretty good. Um, if I one of the things I did want to check out from this shit ton of uh, shows that were happening this weekend, this is one of them. This was the one of the matches I wanted to see how Shane and Baszler would have done. Uh, outside of WWE, this is, they mentioned this is her first uh, indie show in many, many years. Um, 2017, I believe, was the last time that she actually had a indie, an indie event. Uh, but, but yeah, I would love to see this version of Shane DeBaser on the main roster. Uh, speaking of blood sport, uh, it was found out that because uh, Zoe Stark was accompanied Shane at ringside here. Not only that, in attendance of blood sport was the following names: Braun Strowman. If I hold on, let me see if I can find it. Braun Strowman, uh, Nia Jax, Piper Niven, Caden Carter, Karrion Cross, Tegan Knox, uh, Joaquin Wild, uh, maybe. Natalia, I'm not entirely sure. I know she was at the Stardom show, and of course, CM Punk were there in favor to show their support for Shayna Baszler. Also making a surprise appearance on that show was Charlie Dempsey uh, from NXT. Uh, made a lot of sense here. So, yes, more than one WWE talent appeared at Bloodsport for GCW. Um, one match I haven't watched yet. Um... And I'm looking, I'm going to try to watch the match at some point, which was the Master Slam of it match with uh, Sherry for the JCW Championship. Uh, and it's the match I was wanting to see, but I'm not going to be able to, unfortunately, not on this review. But I will, uh, I will watch the match when I can get to it. Um, but... That should be a lot of fun here. Um, Tony Storm. Timeless Tony Storm made a surprise return to Stardom. We'll talk about where she showed up here. Because uh, she did a little bit of foreshadowing for the potential unfortunate Stardom AEW crossover that's happening. Uh, uh, Tony, St- not Tony Storm. The other Tony, Coke Man. Uh, Mentioned stardom in a media call, uh, saying, and I quote, uh, saying, AEW's relationship with stardom is much better now after Rossi Ogawa's departure, says the new management has been great to work with. Uh, Rocky Romero was also a very instrumental in getting stardom showcased on the AEW, on the pay per view, which is the Ring of Honor pay per view, which we'll talk about what they're doing on the show in just a little bit. Because uh, if you are unaware, uh, they'll be part of Super Conrad of Honor uh, 7 uh, this coming, s- actually tomorrow, or it's today as I'm recording this. Uh, it's going to be Mina Sharukawa. Mm, uh, it's going to be uh, two thirds of the Art of Storm champions Mina Shirakawa and the World of Storm champion Micah taking uh, teaming with the former high speed champion. We'll talk about how that became a former on the show here. Uh, May Sode, uh, who will be taking on uh, Tam Nakano, Saya Kamatani, and Azumi of uh, Queen's Quest. No, Tam Nakano is not on a part of Queen's Quest, she is the leader of Cosmic Angels. Uh, we don't know who the current leader of uh, uh, Queen's Quest is after the departure of Utami Hayashisa, um, who might be appearing at NXT as well. I don't know. That's a, that's something I've been hearing. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Can't, I still couldn't get confirmation on that. I've been work, I've been trying to figure that out all day long about. Utami, actually, I've been trying to figure out about that on since Wednesday, since the whole thing with Julia and Rossi. Uh, Julia and Rossi uh, came out, uh, but I um, still haven't got confirmation on that. Um, but there's a, there is a very high chance that we see 
not high, I wouldn't say high chance, but a very good chance that you might see Utami as well pop up at uh, NXT to NXT stand and deliver. But we do know about Julia and for and for sure know about Julia and uh, Rossi Ogawa. So that is the stuff there. I will talk about again uh, Ring of Honor. I will bring it up during the SmackDown review. Um, I'm gonna try to do the SmackDown review and then watch the Hall of Fame afterwards. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be. I, I will do a short SmackDown review, probably the shortest whenever. Uh. Not in shorts whenever, just get through the, the stuff that has to get through there and probably run through my mania predictions one more time just to get that out of the way and all that stuff there. So let's talk about the show. Five matches, very short. All these matches were actually under 15 minutes, believe it or not. Uh, the weird omissions of the show here are as follows. We do know that the, the former stardom talent known as Mirai Yuzuki, Utami, Julia, and uh, My Sakurai were not a part of the show. However, other names that were missing from this show, which is very surprising to me, um, given how uh, how um, liked these people are. Uh, you got Lady C, who weren't, didn't make the trip over. Uh, not Tapoy didn't make... Oh, she might have made the trip over. I don't know. I don't know if she's doing anything for Spark Yoshi. Um, but uh, Natsu Kotoro didn't make the trip over. Rina didn't make the sh- trip over. Trip over. Uh, Soriano didn't make the trip over. Sai Ida didn't. Hinan didn't. Sai Kamatani. No, actually, she was on the show. Never mind. Uh, 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 Su- Su- Suzuki, which is a very interesting one that didn't make the trip over. Uh, Tekla, not really signed at this point here. Waka Chikiyama didn't make the trip over, and she was born in America. Uh, Hazuki didn't. Hanako didn't. Uh, Ami Sarei didn't. Um, Hina didn't. Koguma didn't. Lady C didn't. Uh, so, name, so very noticeable names uh, missing from the show. Uh, I think Hazuki would have gotten over. She she was she was over the last time, but she but now she's mega over now. Uh, I wish she had made the trip, but she didn't. Um, but we had two championship matches on this show, uh, and history was made on one of these championship shows, and I actually put up the tweet, and I'm actually going to bring that tweet up uh, here in a second. But it was May Sare. She uh, defended the high-speed championship in a triple threat match. This was the first time that the style... Actually, no, this is not the first time the style has been defended in a triple threat match. This is funny enough. I don't, I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, she defended against Ram Kachow, uh, Kai Chow, uh, Captain Ram, as I call her, and uh, Saki Kashima uh, from God's Eye. Uh, this match, shortest match of the show, five minutes, but it was a lot of fun. I love, I love all three of these women involved here. Um, when I get to see uh, Ram anytime I want on here, it's good stuff. Uh, I still go back to that video she did of her, or it was a video she did, it was a video of her doing the thriller dance in character. She kept doing it throughout the, 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 the one of the matches that she wasn't in. It was, it was funny shit. And she just played into it a little bit more, which is great. Uh, but here, uh, again, for, five, for only five minutes, it was fine. A lot of fun. Um, what surprised me a lot about this was the there was a title change on this show. I was not expecting a title change on this show. The funny thing about this is, and I and I brought out brought up the three way thing. This is not the first time that the three way match has been decided for the high speed title, uh, because when May Sura, May Sura, uh, or May Sura. actually won the championship it was a three-way and i'm gonna and let me see if i can find because this is this is just funny to me because uh the golden fight right oh no actually hang on no no she didn't win it in the three-way uh excuse me no she won it from 
Saki Kashima, right? So the person who won the won the title on this show was Saki Kashima. The funny thing about that is Saki Kashima won the title the first time exactly the same way in a triple threat match at Flashing Champions in back in May. She defeated uh, the at the at the time champion Azumi, who again is my favorite uh, holder of that title, and Fukujin Def here. Osmi was doing some other things on this show. Uh, Fuki Jadath was not on here. Uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, Saki Kashima did her Kashi Kise uh, and got the win here. I was surprised by a title win here. Uh, I wasn't expect. I wasn't. I didn't expect the world title to change hands, but I, but I sure as hell wasn't expecting the, the high speed title to change. Uh, and I put out the tweet. And I say congratulations to the lovely Saki Kashima as she created history today as being the first person to win a stardom championship outside of Japan. Uh, and then I, I made the tweet saying, what I mean by this is the high-speed cha- title is the first stardom title to change hands outside of Japan. And Saki Kashima gets that honor, gets the honor to, to be doing that, doing first. Uh, because... Uh, I know the, the SWA championship was crowned in France. I or no Spain, I believe. Uh, I was not counting the New Japan owned championships, which are the Strong Women's Title or the IWGP Women's Title. Uh, those are not technically Stardom titles. Sure, Mayu Itani holds the IWGP Women's Title, but they're not necessarily Stardom owned championships. Um, so, but yeah, this is a this was surprising to me. I didn't see that coming and, you know, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with Saki Kashima next, um, because you got all-star grand queen and we had three matches announced. Uh, one that was officially announced on this show, um, which we'll get to at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, the show here. Um, but, but, uh. I don't know if, I don't know, they may run back a rematch with, with May. I don't know. Um, though, now that Saki Kashima is the champion again, maybe we can go back to my original uh, destination plan, which was uh, Rina losing the championship, the, high, the other championship, the future stardom championship, build her up to be the one to take the high speed title from Saki Kashima. Um, no, the person I wanted. Rina to take uh, lose the championship to is no longer there, so I don't know who they're gonna give the cha- give the title to now, but um, we'll see. We will see on that. Though it is very interesting because now I know I know Hazuki said she wanted another another shot at the high speed championship. However, she said she wanted. I, it's very weird now because I don't know. I we'll see. We'll see where it goes there from there. Yeah, uh, but action did start to pick up uh, as uh, Azumi and Saya Kamatani from Queen's Quest team with Ke- uh, Cameron Barana. I believe that's a pronounce her name. I, I did apologize. I don't. I have a clue who this woman is. Uh, they took on. The team of Momo Watanabe, Starlight Kid of Oedo Tai with the women's strong women's champion, Stephanie Vikir. Um What I gathered from this match, which was, was really good, by the way, uh, that, Sa- that Momo Watanabe, Starlight Kid, and Azumi were the most over people in this match. And the... The English Stardom Twitter page put out a tweet um, not that long ago, about Wednesday maybe it was, saying, uh, uh, and I quote, Queen's Quest needs a new leader for the new for our new era. Sai Kamatani might feel like, like the obvious but choice, but who's your pick? And I put in the comments... 
like if I can find the comments there, give me a second. I made the comments. I made the comment, though I'm blocked, but I was just able to make the comment because I read it on a different uh, page here. I said, you say, you say it's an obvious choice, but yet you have, you have an entire comment section and quote tweets telling you otherwise. What I mean by that is they all want. Oh my God. <laughs> Saki Kashman is great. She's fantastic. She, she's pretty, she keeps tweeting because she's at the uh, GCW show to watch uh, Sherry. Uh, and she keeps tweeting and she, t- <laughs> she tweeted. Uh, break, she keeps doing breaking news in her tweets. Uh, during, I believe her, her non wrestling tw- Twitter. Uh, <laughs> of her just being herself saying my, the battery is only at six percent so i can't report it right away <laughs> i like maybe she maybe she should uh maybe she should you know charge her phone in the hotel room um, um that's just me uh but anyway where was i going where was i where was i going with this Where, I forgot what I, I forgot exactly where I was going with this. I, I don't even I don't even remember where the hell where I was going with this. Oh, anyway, I, I was talking about Queen's Cross. So, um, poor Saya Kamatani got no love from the, from the crowd. Uh, that much on in Philadelphia, and I, and I have a friend who went there, uh, who really likes Sai Kavatani. Uh, agreed with me <laughs> that yeah, she didn't get very much love as much as Starlight Kid, Momo Watanabe, and Ozmi. Momo Watanabe being the only one of those three who actually was in, I, as far as I'm aware. Um, let me see, because I'm actually, I'm not, uh, hold on, let see, now I'm going to, uh, now I'm curious, because, let me see, let me see, who, who else, was anybody else, okay, so, the people who competed on that show, okay, so only three people, no, four people, from that original stardom show in the States, uh, competed on this show, that being Konami who at the time was a member of Queen's Quest, Saki Kashima, Mayu Iwa, and Mayu Iwatani. Mayu Iwatani, no, four. No, it's four people. So, I'm ex- So, like I said, Konami, who was part of Queen's Quest at the time, Saki Kashima, Mayu Iwatani, and Momo Watanabe, who defended the Wonder Art Startup Championship against Utami Hayashista. So, this is a first. So, uh, and on this show, three of the four people, actually, no, I think all four people, all four of them actually competed on this show, <laughs> which is very, which is interesting to me. But uh, Omomo, who was over then, even when she was a leader of Queen's Quest, um, is still over with the crowd now. Starlight Kid, who had her debut in the United States, was loved by the fans here, and rightfully, rightfully so. Uh, Starlight Kid is phenomenal. Starlight Kid, I don't think is, no, she's not wrestling on 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 Ring of Honor. Uh, they're not they're not ready for Starlight Kid. I'm sorry, uh, but I don't know if Ring of Honor slash AEW fans are ready and prepared for the greatness of uh, Azami that's coming your way. Because um, if I'm if I'm Tony Khan, which I'm, thank God I'm not, because then I would probably have uh, issues with what people say about my company. Uh, but if I was, I would have at least for at least five minutes of ring time to be spent with Azumi and May Sure in the ring together, because they, because those two could have a a phenomenal one-on-one match. I, I they've had. 
a phenomenal one-on-one match before. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, I, I'm just saying. Um, but that's just me. That is just me. But, yeah. But uh, Momo Atanabe and Starlight Kid and Stephanie Vakir got the win here, uh, which helped two th- establish two things here to... Uh, well, I believe Stephanie got the pin on uh, it might have been Saya Kamatani. I don't remember who it was, but it was how. But it makes Osmi still look uh, good in defeat because she is getting the title match at Windy, Wind, uh, Windy City Riot uh, against Stephanie Vickier for the strong championship. Uh, Momo Atanabe, who is being who is being Mega pushed right now, thank God. Um, who's getting wins over these uh, big established names? Uh, she just finished uh, her. Uh, she just finished with Utami Hayashista uh, at the last Stardom show, uh, where um, it was a, it was the ten woman tag match in. Uh, Momo beat pinned Utami Hayashisa. Uh, she also has pinned Sai Kamatani. And I believe, I believe she pinned. Who else was it? She, there was somebody else that she pinned recently. Was it Shiri? I think it was Shiri. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Shiri. Uh, but, um, yeah, I believe it was Shiri. But, anyways. She's getting built for a, a thing, and we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, loved. I'm so happy for Osme. She's been wanting to go to the United States to perform for many, many years, and she finally got to do it today. Uh, she is not done. She's got uh, the Ring of Honor show uh, later tonight, uh, which, which I look. All I want is for. These women, startup women, to actually have some fucking shine going on to them, and because uh, it's going to be the first national exposure. Uh, because sure it's going to be on Honor Club, but uh, AEW people watch Ring of Honor now, so who knows? But yeah, uh, the heels will get the win here. Um, after the match. Uh, Stephanie Vickera and Ozzy tried to get into it, and the referees tried to stop it here, and so it's and all that stuff here, building towards the match for Windy City Riot. So yeah, uh, fine match. Uh, I give this a good three and a half. Uh, I give the other match me and also a three and a half here. But uh, yeah. Next up, you have Will Nightingale and Saki taking on uh, Sherry and uh, Konami of God's Eye. Uh, this was also 10 minutes. It was all right. It was fine. Um, I was surprised that, uh, uh, kind of, not really, but um, Will Nightingale hit her, her uh, powerbomb for the win on Konami to get the win here. Uh, obviously, Will Nightingale is getting the TBS title match with Julia Hart at Dynasty, uh, so you got to keep her strong as well. Also, Shirley, who didn't get the, did not get the, uh, didn't get pinned in this match. She's got the, she had the match with uh, Masha Slamovich, which, from my understanding, went to a 30 minute time limit draw, which I still am very excited to see that match when I can. Uh, yeah, this was fine. Nothing, nothing too spectacular here. Uh, nice to see Konami again. Anytime I get a chance to see Konami wrestle, because I'm missing her wrestle more often. Uh, but, uh, we did. We did find out that she's not actually under contract with Stardom anymore. Like officially, uh, she did uh, sign with Skabon, um officially. So uh, that is a lot of fun. So I'm so glad that she's doing something here. So I'm surprised Skabon didn't have a a, a show WrestleMania weekend. This would have been a, a phenomenal place to do one of these. Okay, I know Bull Nakano is going to the Hall of Fame this week uh, or tomorrow. 
or today, whenever you, whenever you guys listen to this. Um, and if you listen to this on, on Thursday, on Saturday, then it's already happened. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, very, very, very surprised by that. Six woman tag team action here. We had a sort of a, a mini stars reunion as Mayu Itani and Momo Koko, they teamed with Cosmic Angels leader Tam Nakano. Tam Nakano used to be a member of Stars back in the day. They t- took on the the re- the short lived reunion of Club Venus, Mina Shodakawa, Minaya May, and Zaya Brookside. This was a lot of fun here. Um, I get this one. In, I get four, four, four and a half. Not, not you know. No good. Give, I'll give it a three and a half here. Not quite four. The three and a half is what I give it here. Um, uh, nice to see Tam Nakano, who did, who, who is making her first appearance and start a lot. A lot is actually, you know, Tam Nakano was on the show last time, so I'm incorrect here. I'm so far off removed here because so the people who were on the so again, who was on the Big Apple show in 2019. Uh, who was on this show? That'd be Konami, Utami Hai, uh, Konami, Bon Watanabe, Mayu Utani, Saki Kashima. And yes, Tam Nakano was on that show too. Tam Nakano makes her return to America to wrestle on this show here. Mayu Utani was here not that long, not in Philadelphia, but was on, um, what show? What Matt? What Matt? What show was it? Was it Lone Star? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember how long ago that was, but she defended the uh, IWGP Women's Championship on that show. Might have been against Stem, Stephanie Vicar, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but they defeated Club Venus here, which that, a little surprise there that, that uh, Mina Shirakawa didn't get the win here. But Tam Nakano uh, got the win for her team because, of course, she did. A joke, but um. Uh, Mumba Kogo return, had, had a match here uh, in Philadelphia. Was it SummerSlam weekend? <coughs> sorry. I'm sorry if I'm coughing here. But I think, I think it was SummerSlam weekend. I'm not sure. Um, where uh, they did the, the Impact show, and it was the four-way, and, it was, and I believe Mumba Kogo was on that show as well. Uh, with Julia uh, and all that stuff there, but yeah, this is fu- this is fine here. Uh, again, nothing right home about. But after the match, uh, Timeless Tony Storm, the AEW Women's Champion, came out. I wouldn't see this coming. This was a nice surprise here. Uh, she came up with flowers here. Uh, uh, she made her first appearance in Stardom since 2016. 2018 rather um which is very very good here i uh, i was not i was not prepared to see her make her return here on this show but it was but it was uh but it was uh very very out of the blue here but uh and she was basically basically telling mariah may that she loves her and all this stuff here's your flowers and all that stuff here uh meanwhile mina shirakawa was in the corner not liking any of this here because because Mina Shirakawa is being jealous here of all this stuff. Uh, Mina gets to the face of of t- uh, Tony and basically Tony is like, you know, the forbidden door is always open and shoves the the uh, title into Tony Storm's face. So, yeah, uh, this kind of confirms the 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 forbidden door stuff here with with Stardom. Um, if Tony Storm retains the championship at Dynasty, and we get, uh, and then we get Tony Storm going into Forbidden Door Four or Forbidden Door Three with uh, the, the AEW Championship, go ahead, do do do, do her versus Mina Shirakawa on that show. Why not? Um, I don't know who's gonna be the ch- I you know we'll we'll see who else well, what other stardom or, uh, stuff they do here. We don't need 
you know, I if if they're gonna have Stardom involved with with Forbidden Door, I want a Stardom title being dependent on the show. Whether it's the World Stardom Championship or the Wonder of Stardom Championship, uh, who knows? Anyways, but yeah, a uh, nice surprise from Tony Storm. Didn't see that coming here. Uh, but these are they are teasing a potential Tony Storm meet in a Shadow Cow match for down the line, maybe in Stardom, maybe in AEW. We'll see where that goes. Main event, Micah defended the World of Stardom Championship against Megan Bain. This is basically a Stardom AEW match first. Technically, the first real AEW Stardom crossover match. If you really think about it. Um, this match was a four, four and a half star match. I enjoyed this. Uh, Megan Bain, whose best match was with Julia. Back at Green, uh, Grand Queen, uh, not Grand Queendom, Dream Queendom. When Meg, uh, when Micah won, won the championship. Micah is having banger matches. She's only had three title defenses, but her title defenses were were, were great shit here. She had a, her first title defense was against uh, 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 Side Capitani, which was phenomenal. Uh, the most recent title defense she had last, when, when was it? Was it the twentieth? That was whoa, what, what, how long ago was that? Well, how long ago was that? Two weeks ago, where she almost went thirty minutes with Utami Hayash in Utami's final uh, World of Stardom Championship match. So, uh, and then here with Megan Bain, she's killing it as World Stardom Chairman. And at this point, I don't want her to take the ch- them to take the title off of her. Even though the person who's challenged her next, I would love to see her win the title. But yeah, this match was this was match was crazy. Megan Bain is doing some flying fucking clotheslines and lariats and all this shit here. Uh, Mike at one point hit a damn super Micah driver to the top of the rope. Megan Bain kicks out of that, and then she was able to deliver a, another Micah driver, a standard Micah driver for the win here. This is great. Uh, they celebrate, uh, and 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 I said, I said, now watch Momo Watanabe come out here, and uh, uh, call next. And not even five minutes later, out comes Momo Watanabe with the crowd cheering her on, saying, "Your next challenger is me." I was I. Still, still taking it back from here and speak English. I've never heard that woman speak English in my life. But uh, she said, I want you next. The champion, the challenger should be me. You've been basically, I'm not, this is not what she said because I, because most of the rest of it was English. Uh, no, the rest of it was in Japanese. But the gist of it is basically, uh, you've been ducking me for, for weeks now. I've been on this roll here beating people like Sherry and Utami. I, I took out Utami Hayusita. I got rid of her from stardom. I also took beat... Oh, my God. Who the fuck was the other person that she beat? Who the fuck... Was, is there somebody else that was, that was saying that she had beaten that just recently? Who the fuck was it? Sherry, Utami... Not Julia... Who the fuck am I thinking of here? Now this is now, now this is going to get on my goddamn nerves here. Hold on a second. I, I'm sorry if I'm doing this live here. Why the fuck can I not think of her name here? Why in the fuck can I not think of her name here? It was Saya Kamatani. That was the other one. I couldn't think of her name. Oh, my God. Her name was escaping me. Okay. So she beat Shiri, Saya Kamatani, and Utami Hayashita. 
I could not fucking remember her name. I don't know why. First, but um, basically saying you've been ducking me. Uh, it's time to go over because here, because you know, last what was it two weeks ago after Utami lost the match with Micah, uh, Momo came out and says, you know, I want, I I want to face you for the championship. And Micah's like, nah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna face Mega Bane instead. Which clearly pissed her off. So now we have our main event set for the 27th of April, Yokohama Arena for All Star Grand Queendom. It will be Micah defending the World of Startup Championship against Momo Watanabe, which would be an excellent match. And part of me would love to see Momo Watanabe win the championship. But the other part of me thinks that they're just not gonna pull the trick on it. Now, if they do, I'm not going to be upset at all if Michael, if, if, if Momo Wai wins the championship. She absolutely fucking deserves the title. She has worked. When I, when I talk about Michael working her ass off to get the championship, Momo Watanabe has been in some deep fucking shit with booking. Oh, with Rossi Ogawa there. She absolutely deserves a run with the championship. You do not give a woman like that who, who had... One of the best, if not the greatest, runs with the world of with the Wonder Stardom Championship, and they never gave her a run with the with the, with the world title. That's like giving Momo. That's like giving Utami Hayashita a a phenomenal white belt run. It's like giving her. That's like giving her this amazing undefeated streak, and then never giving her the championship. Same thing with with Julia, right? You just don't do that. So I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be mad at all if Momo wins the championship uh, on the 27th, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but overall, I thought this show was really good. The only, uh, the only downside, the only negative I have on this show, it has nothing to do with the actual show itself. It has nothing to do with the wrestling of the show, the wrestlers at all. I love Veda Scott and I love Tom Lawler. I could not hear a fucking word of what they were saying on commentary because the audio was fucking terrible. Oh my god, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear what Tony Storm said. I had to go look up some transcripts. I could not hear what Mike what Momo Wata, I I didn't know what Momo Watanabe said until I had to look up transcripts. Micah, same thing. She, I didn't know she accepted the match because I couldn't hear a fucking thing, right? So, it, I, you know, I just couldn't hear a thing. Um, so I, I I'm gonna ask one of my friends, my friend who went, what Micah said uh, to Momo and what Momo said to Micah. Like after uh, after whatever, because I can, or or get some current transcripts of what uh, Tony Storm said, because I didn't hear a fucking thing. I couldn't hear a fucking thing. Barely hear a thing. So this was the pro- This was this was the problem I had with the 2019 show. because uh, they went on after House of Glory decided to fuck their last their side, their bottom rope up, and they never decided to fix it. The audio was not the greatest um, at all when it came to commentary and all that stuff. Now, if you go watch one of their other pay-per-views, like the uh, finals of the Cinderella tournament or, you know, uh, Dream Queendom or whatever whatever show it is, Flashing Champions or whatever, right? The audio, the audio, is, the audio is fine. You, the, you get to hear the music except for certain songs which is weird to me but the commentary you can hear that you can actually hear the commentary team on that show you couldn't hear tom lawler and uh Rita scott on the show and again also another thing stardom Get your boy Walker Stewart on the show. He wants to do one of these shows. He's begging. He's practically practically begging you guys to do one of these shows. 
you had him in Philadelphia taking bookings for commentary and you didn't even go with him. Come on now. If you and I, I, I they're starting to do live streaming events now on their on their uh streaming service. If you're gonna do that, you're gonna have to have commentary for your how sh- these shows because I don't know if anybody's gonna watch wanna watch live streams of of pure silence outside of the wrestling whatnot. So and I would invest in getting a a, a commentary team, uh an English commentary duo. So whether it's Walker Stewart and Chris Charlton, I would absolutely love for Walker Stewart and Chris Walker Stewart and Chris Charlton are going to do the historic crossover event when that happens later this year. Right? That's going to happen. And I'm far, and I'm all for it here. He's technically going to be called, that's when he's technically, will probably first call his first stardom show. Um, Or if you want to get the guy from Pro Wrestling Noah, I forgot, I forgot his name. I don't remember his name. I think his name is um, Patrick. I think his name is Patrick something or another. Hang on a second. Pro Wrestling Noah English. Stuart Fulton, that's his name. Stuart Fulton. You can get him. If he wants to do it, get him to do it. Whatever. Mumble Koga, whatever you want to do. Right? You got to have English com- commentary. A lot of people do love English commentary a little bit more than Japanese commentary because not a lot of people know Japanese. And, then, you know, nobody's not going to go. Nobody's not going to Nobody's going to know what the hell's going on if you can't really explain it, right? Audio-wise, this was not a good introduction for people who want to get into stardom. If then people are going to assume that this the that star, our stardom's audio productions is is terrible. Uh, when in reality it's not. Um, it's it's just not. They their audio production skills is a lot better than the, this. Um, I. I don't know who was who. I'm not exactly sure who was in charge of audio in that in that venue, uh, but you should be fired <laughs> from your position, moved to somewhere else. Uh, that was atrocious. Uh, but everything else is fine. I everything else. I enjoyed the show. The wrestling was great. Audio was my only issue on the show here. Uh, but other than that, uh, the show gets a good four out of five for me. Uh, that one point co- that comes off is because of the commentary, uh, or not the commentary, the audio. I'm pretty sure the commentary was fine. I just didn't get to hear most of it. Is all, that's what I'm saying here. Uh, but but anyway, I've been Matt the Misfit. This has been the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I will see you back here tomorrow or later on tonight, rather, for SmackDown, the final SmackDown before or the big WrestleMania 40. Night one, night two, we seen the set reveal that had came out earlier, t- or about a few hours ago. So uh, we don't know the actual match order. It's supposedly been leaked. Well, we don't know. Uh, will Julia make her presence felt uh, on Saturday or Sunday? We will see. Until then, I've been Matt the Misfit. This has been the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Please listen to the Raw Review that from this past Monday and listen to this review and then watch out for the SmackDown review. Uh, there will be, again, no pile driver post this weekend because of WrestleMania. Uh, that will be returning next week or next weekend. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, until then, we're out. <laughs>